The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the 8.06 uh, time frame, Eastern Time. I shall be re recorded and replayed at 10. So this is uh, pre-market opening. The Dow futures are down 120 at 32,066. What a vicious turnaround yesterday. Week in the morning, and then the Fed comes out, it popped up, the futures popped up, then all of a sudden the market started to come down, and then it soared sharply higher to a new recovery high in leg D in the, this is the YM, this is the uh, Dow futures that I'm showing you right now on this Thursday, the 3rd of November, and um, and then a, a vicious turnaround when the Fed's at 2 o'clock, everything's looking great, 2.05. And then all of a sudden, uh, 2.10, and then whoosh, at 2.30 when the Fed comes on, it just market tanks and closes down 500 points. So we're looking now at the 200-period exponential moving average as becoming a key uh, factor here, 32,250 in the futures. And uh, I don't know where, where the price will be after 10 o'clock because we've got news coming out at, I think, 8.30 this morning of the economic news, probably at 10 o'clock. So whatever it is. Uh, most important, if you're looking at the weekly chart right here, look at the symmetry of these uh, cup formations. And I've drawn them actually as an arch just to show you what I'm looking at in terms of time. I'm going to actually get rid of that because that's that's confusing. The real pattern that I'm looking at here is the exact opposite. It's at the bottom with a cup formation with lower highs and lower lows. Now we're getting to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. One of the reasons I said to subscribers to my opening call is we're going to take some money off the table in our, our long, very long uh, positions. Um, the Dow, the DIA, which is one to one long plus the three times long, the UDOW uh, today, uh, today, yesterday, three days ago, is because going to a D in the Chapman Wave methodology is where other things can happen. Yes, it can go higher, but that's where you raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, and just see how this unfolds. This is an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's a very simple technique. If at any point in this long wick to the upside, uh, the Dow starts to trade at 32,800 and can hold there for about uh, 90 minutes, then there's a really good chance that within a very quick period of time, the same day or the same bar, I should say, or the very next bar, there's a test of the high, in this case, in the futures is 33,106 in the Dow itself. I'm spending a little time on the Dow because that is the best index that we've got at this particular point. I've been noting that for some time. So that is a peak D. It went almost to the uh, target on the left side. Uh, in fact, the 32,504 level was broken. Then the very next one is up here at the high that was made on the 26th of August at uh, the Dow 33,364. I think that's going to have to wait. But I do believe that there are buying, uh, there's buying going on in the steep cyclicals. Can you believe that a caterpillar, I mean, if ever there was a deep cyclical caterpillar, heavy duty equipment, broke above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone? And Boeing, Boeing is doing very nicely off the bottom. It's not great. I'm just saying it's a deep cyclical. And look at that leg E. Even with yesterday's huge turnaround in the, in the overall market, Boeing still landed up uh, on a closing basis at 147. But intraday, it went all the way to 154, was it? Uh, 153.59, and today already in the futures is up 59 cents. So something's going on in the in the in the market that is very different, and I we've been very select in our position in our positioning of longs. Most importantly, what we are looking at here is that the the money that's coming out of the tech sector is now going into specific areas, and that's really important. And those specific areas. Uh, are not always in the same stocks, all the stocks in a sector, but it could be the leaders of that sector. Okay, so um, now I needed to go to, let's see, how am I going to get that? Yeah, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, sorry, I just needed to move something over. There it is. 
So a uh, question came in. Yes. So a couple of a couple of things are happening right now. Uh, let me run them all. So we've got the. I'll go to the continuous contract because this way you can see it in all time frames. The E mini. This is the continuous contract trading at thirty seven forty two. It's almost exactly the same as the as the few as the um, December contract. Made a peak E on Thursday. Yesterday did not make a new high. Made a leg E, then yesterday didn't make a new high. That becomes in the chat wave a peak E. Look at the sharp pullback. So that's the saying to me. We're in this. We still. One of the reasons why I haven't for subscribers gone full fully invested. We're being very select. We built up a huge cash position. We were uh, intermediate term short. We got taken out of that short finally. I think it was uh, on Thursday. Uh, what do you? Friday uh, on Friday. And um, uh, now we've only got long positions, and we took profits in that uh, intermediate term short from uh, August in the DOG, uh, one to one short the Dow. And I'm being very selective. And the reason is that that wasn't a low. We were seeing, oh, I don't know if I can do this, maybe tomorrow in Technical Friday, I'll go to this particular chart right here. Uh, let me see, I can go to it. I'll put Dow, INDU. And then I'll just briefly show it, but tomorrow I'll talk about it in greater detail. That's this chart right here. Not this chart. Nope, that's the other chart. Uh, I, I don't know if I can find it. Uh, yes, I can. There it is. This chart right here. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do that. I'll have to take time in the break to get it back. All right, so that is... <laughs> That's gone. I'll have to find it again. Uh, in the meantime, it, it has to do with my internal low and residual low. I'll talk about it when I get back. Hopefully, I'll find it. So in the meantime, let's go through the uh, – so that's the S&P. Uh, the QQQ, uh, which is trading pre-market, made a peak C and is turning around. So failing in a peak C, you've got to watch this really closely. So these uh, this NDX 100 stocks – they're still under pressure, and that money is going into other areas still. I thought it would stop at a certain point. In a certain sense, some stocks are starting to move, but generally that uh, NDX 100 is acting very weak. IWM was acting very nicely. Then it got hit very badly yesterday. Look at that candle. It wipes out uh, five days of trading just like that. Whoosh. And so it's trading down $1.27 at 176. We're looking at gold. Now look at gold. Look at these patterns. Gold is down $25 at $16.25. There's this pattern I call the H pattern. It comes down sharply, and then it arches over, and either at a peak A or a B, it comes down. If that takes out the left side low, that's usually a very, very poor indication of strength, rather its weakness. And 1622.2 was the low in the continuous contract on the 28th, and today's low is already in the 1618 area. So this is going down to yet another leg D to the downside in gold. And that just says to me, be really careful in all these different sectors here. Um, uh, cash is a position, and putting money to work selectively, I think, is, is the operative way to do it. Look at silver. Silver had a much better chart formation. It's still a better chart formation, but it's weak today, 18.99. I'll go to the dollar as we go to a break. This is Basil Chapman, early edition, 8.14 in the morning uh, instead of my usual 10.14. And look at that strong move in the dollar. And that's adding to the market weakness. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, early edition. And the Dow futures are down 162. SP's down 27. I'll be right. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So this is uh, pre-recorded. It's live right now. Uh, it'll be uh, replayed at uh, 1018. It's 8.18 right now in the morning. The futures are down 157 in the Dow, 25 in the uh, futures S&P. What we're looking at here is a, a technique that I developed a long time ago, of trying to assess. I've always spoken about internal lows and residual lows. I mean, this goes back decades. It goes back to uh, years where you saw a low in October in um, some of the indices and in six months later in March, you would either get the low, uh, meaning a, a lower low, or a higher low. Sometimes it was the semiconductors that made the low in October and it was a higher low in March or March, uh, the other way around. But whatever it is, I, I start to look at the markets and say, you know, I think it's like an earthquake. You get the earthquake and then you get the aftershock. Sometimes the aftershock is even worse than the earthquake. Sometimes it's very minor. But I just, I, I, I Related that to the market. So this particular chart goes back a long time. I don't want to go through that right now. You can see internal low, residual low, dark news cloud cover. That's where the market has always got some bad news. But when it takes the news seriously, instead of being just ignoring it, you know, climb a wall of worry, when all of a sudden that wall of worry becomes a barbed wire fence, that's what I always look at. So this is like May 2021, internal low. Then uh, back in uh, late June, you get the residual low, an arch formation, successful. It goes under and then it quickly turns up. And many of these, these gray rectangles represent uh, certain aspects to it, especially the top. So un under these conditions, we've had an internal low that was made back in right here, back in uh, September, late September. 30th, a bounce, and then there was a residual low. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted, I kept wanting to go, and we kept going along the diamonds with a little bit of a gain each day or a little bit of a loss, but I knew that it was going to click in. And then, and now we are along from just off the lows. And what we're looking at is that resistance line, simple trend line. You know, I've spent all my life in the market as a technical analyst. Um, ever since uh, studying Joe Granville's on balance volume, I used to hand chart. And 
I have always been an absolute admirer of trend lines because they tell you in one line, it tells you so much. You're just joining the, the peaks or the troughs. And every time, that's how I developed the technique called the inside track repellent zone. Is this not a repellent zone? Look at that. From the high that was made back in January, look at this beautiful trend line. It hits the high right here, back at what, April, May, pulls back. Hits it again back uh, uh, 16th, 17th of uh, August, pulls back, and here we are once again hitting it with yesterday's, well, the last four days going right to the trend line and being, being repelled. And that doesn't say, oh, now we're going all the way down. What it says is now you've got to be a bit careful. And that's the reason why we are uh, stepping back a little bit. So we've made the internal low. We've got the residual low. We've had a huge move to the upside. Now we've got DNCC, which is the potential for a Chapman Wave dark news cloud cover. I'm not going to type it in today. I want to see where we close today before I do that. All right. Now we're out of that. Now let's go back to some other things. See the dollar? Look at this. The dollar made this H pattern. Uh, should I go there? Yeah, I'll go there right now. So this is a pattern that I always look at. Three three particular patterns that, that make up the market all the time. Straight line up, straight line down. Cup formation, that could be a V, but basically you're going from one point down, then back to that point. And then an arch formation, basically you're going from one point up and then back again, or a mix of one and two and one and three. One and two says, whoops, what happens when you come back, especially after a peak A or a B failure pattern, you take out that left side low. What happens within two bars is really important. If you go below it, then there's a good chance if you're rally, you're going to stop at either a, a, a doji or a gap or a moving average uh, resistance below the arch high. And if you don't go under it, it says there's a chance you can break above it. If you close above the arch high, that's really positive, and you should go to the next left side high. In this case, that would be 114.78 for the, the dollar. But you've got to close in the 114 area. So this is a great move. The MACD hasn't turned positive yet. The nine-period moving average has just today crossed L. The day is young. It's a, it's a daily candle, so I can only talk about it at, at uh, four or five o'clock this afternoon, and the stochastics rallied quite nicely. But look at this expanding wedge. Remember this this particular wedge? Is this the one that had it right here? Um, uh, yes, there's the expanding wedge way down when it was down at 89.21. We've been long the dollar for uh, since uh, 2018, April of 2018 at 89. Uh, so uh, yeah, so what we're looking at right now is that this is a large expanding wedge, a narrow large, large meaning long, and we're still within the parameters. And you can see there's a trend line at the bottom, and there's a rising trend line. So that's not a channel. That is a trend line, and that's a trend line, and it's expanding. So it's like a cone formation. So the, the dollar so far has held very well within that. And look at the USD JPY, which is the yen. Um, where did it go? Did I type it in the wrong place? Please say I didn't type it in the wrong place. I'll do it again. Uh, USD JPY. There it is. Okay. So this is fascinating to me because there was a divergence uh, before. And why is it not going to the right? Oh, there are so many things that happened with this particular mouse being so quick. Uh, let me go move. Uh, this is going to be insert format space to the right. I want a little bit more. Yeah, that should be eight. Oh, zero. I don't know how it got to eight, zero. <sighs> These things are just crazy. Okay, there it is. So the unlike the dollar, the USD... JPY, the dollar Japanese yen, was leading, broke out to a peak D, and then turned around and pulled back and made an arch formation, took out the left side low, and is holding at 148.24 when the high was 151. Uh, 94 back on the 21st of October. So this is stuck in a range. So now you've got a little divergence there where the dollar is holding a lot better, looking a lot better. Look at this chart pattern, DXY. There we go. Look at that. A way better pattern. Even though it made the H pattern, it did the cup, how the alternation between cups and arches, cups and arches, on constant, your straight lines. That's what the market's all about. So here we've got a rising wedge formation. You've got the EUR USD. This is the dollar euro, euro. Sorry, this is the euro dollar currency pair, 
And this one's failing. It made a peak C and it's pulling back. But look, it's way at the bottom. It's really struggling to form some kind of a, uh, some catalyst to be able to say, I'm breaking out. I'm going to the 1.04 area. It's just stuck here under one. I mean, at par, it's at 0.975 right now. Um, so it's acting very weakly. I didn't do silver. I just uh, did do silver. I didn't do high-grade copper. High-grade copper is stuck in the lower range. Look at that. Put it together with wood because these are international. Wood is the iShares for the Global Timber and Forestry ETF. That's going to peak ABC. How many? Oh, I thought I'd do that. I wrote it down. You see, I almost forgot to look down at the page. Unbelievable. I spent all this time preparing, and then I don't do it. This is A, B, C, and there's your D. The obligation in the Chapman Wave is to get you from a buy signal to a, a buy mode, which says you're going to go to at least a D, and then you've got to watch out because other things can happen. But at a D, other things are happening. I'll be back, and we'll go through a whole bunch of charts that have made these things. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. So I was talking the Chapman Wave methodology. We're looking for at least four higher peaks. Um, and that is, let me just move that away there. And then basically you try to identify the lowest low, <clears throat> count each successively higher peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it's, a, it's never an H. But at D, other things can happen. Your obligation is to try to get from a basic starting point to uh, at least four higher peaks, a buy signal is upgraded to a buy mode, and that implies it should go to a D. How many Ds could you get? Well, look at this. Uh, you, you get to a D or even an E, but that's where you got to be careful. So here's the one-minute chart. I drew this in uh, just as I was going to start the show, and uh, so people could see this was, uh, I drew it in over there. So I drew in a cup formation. I drew in the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. I drew the left side, right side price time match, and it said by uh, 8.06, there should be a test of the left side high. 
uh, right there at a D or an E, and that was at 733, 37.50. And lo and behold, we went right to D, and then we pulled back, and then whoosh, right on that bar. We went to a, a E, leg E, and continued higher, and three bars later, it made a peak E by, by making a lower low. I didn't have a chance to draw in the left side, right side price time match here, but the way I would have done it is from this particular low right here to that particular high right there. I would have just gone click. You don't have to have these rectangles. Or you can just, everybody has a straight line. You just take a straight line. You, you ask to repeat it. And boom, what did it do? The exact bar. This is what I call bar symmetry. It's, it's a big deal in the Chapman Wave methodology, bar symmetry. And here we are, made a low, and now we're trying to rally again. I just love that. And what is it? It's basically, it might look like an inverted V, but basically it's an arch pattern. Look at that. That's not beautiful. And now it's maybe going to try to do the exact opposite. You got a D and an E back at about 1 o'clock this morning in the 10-minute chart in the E mini and a pull back in left side, right side, price time match. So this is very important. So what I want to do, what did I show you here? You've got to a peak D and Wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, pulling back. But I, I mean, um, I, I, I just wrote... So many of them down. Now, let me just see. Uh, yeah, ABC. Uh, ABC, what is that? I remember that. ABC is uh, Amerisource Burger, right? Peak D. Uh, I, I just could go on and on and on. Caterpillar, oh no, Caterpillar, I think, went to an F. Uh, Lulu, Lemon, Lulu, Lemon. There we go, Lulu, Lemon, Peak D. Just keep going all the way through. So, how important is D? Look at those pullbacks at D right there. And that's before today's opening. So it's very important to be able to get to that fourth highest peak and then to do some kind of analysis. MasterCard, we're all over the show. Oh, I didn't even do this. This is peak A, B, C, D. So here we go uh, from the low. Just merely count each successively higher peak. There it is. The bar that makes the low cannot be the high. So if that, had, well, that was a long move and the next bar had a lower high, that can't be an A. You have to move to the right. You can only start that from after the low. Otherwise, you don't know that it's a trough. It's still just a down leg. So what is this? A, B, C. And where does it stop? I didn't even talk about that. Right at the 200 period exponential moving average. How important is the 200 period? You just put it in and let the market tell you if it comes there or if it doesn't. Well, it did in the daily chart of MasterCard. And look at this. It hadn't been there since uh, it got repelled back in August the 28th, and now it's back there. So, and the stochastic and MACD and everything's holding pretty well. I must say that many of these charts, the technicals are holding very well here. So it could have been some kind of an aberration yesterday because nothing has really changed uh, from one o'clock yesterday to four o'clock. Basic news was kind of known. I mean, it was just wishful thinking that they were going to announce that they'd go 50, 50 instead of 75 at the next meeting. Ah, pretty much the same. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yes, in a sense, it's a buying opportunity. And no, in a sense, uh, you have to let the day play out. It's just important to let the market do what it has to do today. And if you pay up tomorrow, uh, because things are acting so well by the end of the day. That's one thing. Look at this leg C in the IAI. This is a really important indicator for me. The iShares broker dealer and security ETF was still long from way back in 2023 at 45, trying to get back in and we, uh, lately, and we, I keep missing it. And it's, it's acting so well in the daily. But look at this. It got repelled at the 200 period moving air, at the, sorry, inside track repellent zone. So we're going to be watching this, but it's still only in leg C. It should go to a D. I wrote all these uh, these um, uh, charts down, but I don't think I want to actually go through it. Uh, deck, uh, Decker, uh, Decker is uh, out outdoors, made a peak D in the daily. It's possibly making a peak D in the weekly. Nice daily and weekly action, but the monthly says, okay, it's just a rebound. So there's a lot going on. All right, I, I need to do some other things. Uh, questions that come in. Uh, could I, let me see where they are. Um, yes. Uh, could you please look at some of the, some some stocks that uh, could be really important, uh, like um, JP Morgan, JP Morgan. Yeah, JP Morgan. 
uh, it's 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 done very nicely since the the hundred area low. This is still only a leg B in the daily chart, and it's gone above the two hundred period moving average, meaning that at one twenty six ninety seven yesterday, the one twenty four ninety seven area is the two hundred period moving average. If it touches it once, it means that this is like a magnet line, and it's not going to break away until it really puts it pushes into the one thirty four area. So that just says. Nice move in the daily, nice move in the weekly. Monthly chart says, whoa, there's a lot of work to be done. So that's J.P. Morgan. What was the other one? I uh, wrote it down, wrote it down, and now I can't find it. Um, oh, yes. You had spoken about um, L, A, B, L. Was it A, B, L? Uh, a, L, B. Album all uh, recently. Um, it, it, it's in the chemical for electronics, lithium, petroleum, refining, utilities, packaging, construction, transport, pharma, crop produ produce, production, food safety. I mean, this is just in everything. It's one of those stocks that I say, wow. I mean, what can you not like about this stock? Well, it's near the all-time high up in the 300s, made just uh, very, uh, I think it was, there it is, at peak E in the Chapman Wave on the 16th, week of the 16th of September, at 308.24, it's trading at 266 after dropping very quickly down to the 230s on the Chapman Wave inside track propellant line zone. And it's gone to where yesterday it hit a peak D, uh, day before. On uh, what are we doing? Thursday, on Tuesday, it hit a peak D, and Thursday, uh, Wednesday, it pulled back very sharply. So, yes, this, this is a tough thing. To, to, what do you do with a stock like this? If you're an intermediate term uh, positioner, then I'd say, hey, if you aren't in it, put it on your list. If it pulls back towards the 260 area with a five point stop, uh, is it, uh, maybe a five point, yeah, I'd say with a 5%, maybe a 5% stop on an initial position, uh, I wouldn't have, I'd even go to 10% just on the initial position because it's, it's a high price stock at 253. No, I don't want to get 25 points. No, I can't do that. I'd say nibble on any pullback to about 260, uh, under 260, maybe the two, yes. Uh, oh, it's down 12 pre-market at 253. At 253, this is where, if, you, if you're interested in it at all, I think it's digesting gains. I think it's going to do a little bit more testing towards the 240 area to test this inside track propellant zone, see if it holds. So I, I would just hold off. In fact, I'm going to say hold off for now. I'd rather pay up because it's acting well than to pay, um, pay, pay buy it right now and see it suddenly slide sharp. So I'm just saying hold off for me. Uh, we'll be back. Basil Chapman, early edition. He replayed at 10 o'clock, but right now the futures are down 222 in the Dow, 34 in the s &P. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523.
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So it's quite, quite fascinating. In the den, we have such a, such a wonderful uh, crew out there in the, uh, uh, in the Tigers' den. Um, I was doing the, uh, I was showing the chart just a moment ago, uh, and that was the chart of uh, ALB Albemarle. And then what happened was, as I was doing, I said, well, it's, done, it's got all these ideal things. This is very much like CF Industries. And I was about to do that. And right there in the den says, could you show, um, could you show us the, um, uh, where was it? Uh, that was the company Post CF. They reported earnings, taking earnings hit after, uh, like many other times. Yeah, so here it is. And what did it do? It made a peak D. It's pulling back. And it had a rogue wave, basically, it's right, a right arm extension to a peak G. I said it could be a G slash A, but I think it's more like a G. So I put a G right here. And that was that big spike to the 119s. And then what does it do? It pulls back sharply to the 90s, bounces up to 110. And now it's, uh, it closes yesterday at 103. And at this point, it's at 96. Why do I talk about it? Because CF Industries holdings hydrogen, nitrogen products for clean energy, fertilizer, emissions abatement. I mean, come on. This is just the story that you wanted up until now. So maybe we're going ahead and we'll see what happens uh, after uh, the elections next week, how the market reacts to whatever the results are. So let's just do this. I haven't finished it yet. Crude oil right now is trading. Uh, it's at a made, made a leg C yesterday. It's trying to get out of the Chamber Wave Insight uh, uh, track repellent zone to make it a propellant zone it's kind of doing that but it still keeps coming back because it can't leave it alone just has to say hi to its friends and as it stands right now the crude is down a dollar 29 the continuous contract at 88.74 and the weekly chart says you know you're just stuck in a range like even even this trend line you know a long trend line a long-term trend line can get taken out it's not a big deal time alone will take it out but how it gets taken out is important. In other words, if crude oil for a whole week trades in the 95 area, I think that's going to be a big deal. And at this point, it's at 88. So we'll see what, what's happening there. Let's look at natural gas. Natural gas is down again today, down 26 cents at 5.99. I've been very skeptical about it. It looked to me like it was ready for a decent bounce. It looked to me like the time... Just in terms of cycles, this is a cycle with natural gas going to winter. It actually starts to do very well. Usually it's already doing well by now. It's fading. Something's going on that's different to other times. Peak D in the monthly chart. Look at that huge move, uh, sharp move down for the last couple of months. So I'm watching this closely because I think when it does move, it's going to move really quickly. And then maybe it stalls so that 7.33 area and natural gas is a strong resistance. At the 200 period moving average, it was a repellent before. Remember, we just put the line in and let the line tell us when you don't need it, you don't need it. When you do need it, you sure do need it. So that's what we're looking at right now. So I don't want to run out of time because this is a show that's being recorded to be replayed at 10. I like to make it as um, relevant as possible, even though uh, we are 
doing this two hours earlier. So 26.50 is the VIX index. A big move up after going to a leg D to the downside. Look what happened at the peak D at 34.88 back on September the 28th. Huge move down. Then it makes what? A cup formation. Then it makes what? An arch formation. The dreaded H takes it out and then plunges down to where? The 200 period moving averages. You, have you, is, is there a theme here? Absolutely there's a theme. A the theme is that these particular patterns just repeat over and over in every different sector, in every time cycle, it doesn't matter. So we're looking at the VIX index coming to the Chapman Wave inside track, propeller zone in the weekly chart. It failed once before, but otherwise it's been a beautiful trend line. And we'll see what happens. Uh, if it goes under 25, this market's going to go much higher. If it pops to the, it's at 26.52. If by day's end, it actually starts to go over 27, it says, uh oh, be careful the next day or two. But if it, if by mid, I'll do this now. If by mid afternoon, with the futures now down 233, and if this is uh, 10:46 in the morning instead of 8:46 where I'm recording this right now, and the market, the Dow is down over 170 points at this particular time in two hours, that's going to be a very negative. What I said to subscribers: if the Dow is down more than uh, 90 points after after 1:30. That's going to be tough to, to get back to positive. But if you never know with these kind of markets, if all of a sudden the Dow is up 40 or 50 points, it means that it's it's discarded or, or at least disregarded the negative news from yesterday. It's now looking forward and you have to treat it that way. But I said, we're going to just step aside. No new positions today. We've got our stops in place and so whatever it is, uh, just let the market take its own um, just its own rhythm. Just that's all you need to wait for. So that was that. I did that. I did that. Did that. So the volatility index we spoke about. Oh, this is something that's very interesting. Look at this. CVS. Leg D. CVS Healthcore Pharmacy it used to be just a, just a CVS. Now it's Healthcore. Uh, taking over other kind. Of, they're getting more into the medical area. So peak D in the monthly chart. I'm watching this closely together with WBA. This is uh, WBA's Walgreens Boots uh, Alliance. Let me just get that. Click, click. There it is. Click. Um, in leg D, how many Ds? It's just unbelievable. Don't forget, when you're coming off a low, and remember, I don't think that this is the low. I think it's a low, one of those uh, earthquake and aftershocks, bounce off the aftershock. But I think we are getting sector rotation and in the sector rotation i'm looking for areas that have been very weak that are, are are they possibly in this look walgreens boots cvs they're in the area where you can raise prices to a certain extent and then it becomes a little tougher because people do their medications maybe instead of once a day they make it once every other day or once a week they make it once every two weeks and all of a sudden things slow down but this to me is a, going to be a bit of a clue if in three weeks' time we're looking at uh, Walgreens boots trading not at 35, but maybe at 43 to 45. I think that's a slow move to the upside that says, you know what, in the rotation, remember market has been since the March low of 2009, that summer, and the following summer said, you know what, get ready for rotation. Instead of markets crashing, uh, together, you get one sector that's been fantastic. It takes a breather, and another sector takes its place. And that's what we're looking at here. Yeah, that's why when we're looking at the Dow, look, look how nicely the Dow went right to the chap wave inside track repellent zone in the weekly chart. Remember the chart I was showing you with the YM? Uh, and I said these different colored times, time frequencies with high down and back to the, a lower high, and then high, low, down to a higher, to a lower high. And we've got the same thing here. This one's a little quicker than the others, but it's saying this is only a leg A. The other's got to a B. Is this going to fail miserably and become an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, like an uppercase A? Or is this going to pull back a little bit more, maybe 31,200? As I said, that to me is kind of key support for the Dow right now. We're in 31,948. So we'll watch this very closely. Do we somehow, the second week 
the end of the second week of November, uh, is that, uh, yeah, by the second, by about the 11th, I'll be looking at the Dow about 33,600. Uh, That's going to be important. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, futures are down, Dow is down 219. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. As we do this very last segment, remember this is recorded uh, two hours early. Um, this is uh, now 8.54. Uh, Just real quick, look, the OIH, the uh, uh, Van Eck, oil and service, there it is, oil service ETF um, is trading after peak E at uh, 300 and something, 305 round number high. Unbelievable. A beautiful round number high. We're pulling back some in all the oils, and we've got to watch this because it's a peak E and we're pulling back. Uh, right now, it's down at, at one at 291. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Why? Because when a sector becomes overbought to the extent that it just needs a, a it needs a timeout. It's still a major sector, but it needs a timeout. Money flows and pulls out, and as it's pulling out, it doesn't go anywhere immediately. It just comes out, and then you wait to see where it's going to go. So in this pullout, let's look at Exxon, for instance, also made a, this is a leg, F goes to a peak F, it's trading at 109, made a high, an all-time high just uh, two, three days ago. You'll be watching this CVX, not CVS, but CVX, made a peak D, and is pulling back. So I'm watching this very closely. They don't have to crash. They're just I'm just saying a timeout, a breather. And a question came in about the XLE. Same thing, peak E, almost a left side, right side price time match. Just missed it by a couple of points, trading at 88 right now. It's up two cents. I'm watching this really closely. Look at the weekly chart. Big C and a big 
double cup formation. So this is what I'm looking at. A rotation is going on. Money is going into the Dow type stocks, just not all of them, but into a lot of them. The cyclicals have been doing well. What happens next is important. So all I'm saying is a little time out here to see what happens. And just to sum it up, I'll go to the... Uh, uh, I'll go to the YM, which is the Dow Futures, trading down 235. May, probably, I said to subscribers, now we're going to make a peak D, and let's just see how it holds support. 31,690 is going to be support in the very near term. It's trading at 31,940. So we've got that done. You've got a great program coming up today. Check it out, TFNN uh, Live. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, uh, I hope to see you then. And I'm just going to, oh, this is good. For a change, I, I did, oh, SMHs, as we we're about to go to the break, uh, final break, leg D, probably a PD today. I think there's a little time out here. And uh, use it judiciously and know what you want to buy. Check it out, have patience, and put in your bids. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.